receiving this transmission. You are the resistance. Oh, isn't it so nice, the meme magic? Isn't it so nice, the meme war? The left can't meme, so it's just like dunking all day long, like Shaq against against uh, Earl uh, Boykins or whatever that short player name is. You just dunk all day with the memes, and I love that one exposing CNN. Mike Cernovich is joining me now, Cernovich Media. You can find him on Twitter, Mike Cernovich. Now, Mike, I know that you were live multiple times today covering the release of the IG report. We've been taking calls on this. We've been covering this, and our audience and my sentiment right now is that it seems like more of the same. It seems like pushing the ball down the road. Yes, all the corruption, the bias was confirmed in this report, yet it again appears no heads are going to roll. The deep state investigating the deep state, and it's just more pushing the ball down the field and American people getting no justice. What is your takeaway from the IG report today and the response? Well, I'm, to be quite frank, thrilled with the report because uh, as a lawyer, remember, I'm 40 years old. I'm a lawyer. I've been involved in all kinds of federal criminal litigation. The, the, there is no magic wand. It, but what we had today is we had information. We had people's minds can be freed. We have people who realize we were never supposed to know this. We were never supposed to know. So for me, I started from the proposition that they were wanting to assassinate President Trump, and they were not only unable to assassinate President Trump, they have now been caught saying, Trump supporters are, excuse my language, I don't want to get you flagged, but R-E-T-A-R-D-E-D, -E -E you know, I'm not going to say that out loud, it's not family-friendly word to use, but Trump supporters were referred to as the R word, uh, Trump supporters were referred to as um, white trash, uneducated, POSs, you name it, so... This is very powerful now. This is going to lead to um, a new awakening, a new alignment, a new understanding. So, uh, again, I, I didn't expect any of these people to be in handcuffs, but we now have information and we now prove that the FBI um, is an enemy of the American people. They do not, um, they've done nothing on Vegas, and we now know they, they won't tell us the truth about Vegas because. The people killed in Vegas were largely Trump supporters, and according to the FBI, again, I'm not making this up, their own words, according to the FBI, if you support Trump, you are the R word, you're garbage, you're trash, you don't deserve to live, and that's why they won't tell us the truth about Vegas. So this is very powerful stuff for people to know. So are you seeing results like that, though? Because to me, it seems like everybody that is reading this or reporting on this already knew all this yes we have the added easter egg bonuses with more texts uh you know saying they didn't want trump to win the insulting of trump supporters but but mike the new attorney general in new york is trying to shut down the trump administration so msnbc and cnn can report on that all day long and they don't even have to touch this report well owen i mean Let's be honest here. Um, I haven't been on InfoWars for a long time because I was becoming too famous, getting recognized all the time. More people have listened to the Alex Jones show and you and everybody today than watch CNN all day and MSNBC all day combined. So 5 million InfoWars, 10 million InfoWars. And I know how famous, like I said, people were like, oh, why aren't you going on the show, blah, blah, blah all the time. And I'm like, because, dude, like I was becoming more famous than I felt comfortable being. So CNN, MSNBC doesn't have to cover it. The fact is at least 5 million people today through the InfoWars audience, at least 5 million people, maybe 10 million people have now learned even more truth and are now even more empowered. So I, I think today is, again, a great day. Well, and, and you know, you, you've got a young child. You, you've got a wife, you know, and let's be honest, you – you can do a an event. You can organize an event in 48 hours and have more people there than your average leftist, than your average celebrity, or even than Maxine Waters. And I think that speaks to what you're talking about with the power of audience. I guess I guess the the, the silver lining to me is I suppose if they continue to to expose what went on in the FBI and the DOJ, the more people will get outraged. 
And then I guess you hope down the road that with enough public outrage that forces the government to do something. I'm just not sure if I see that playing out, though. Well, we have Mark Meadows, uh, Goats, Representative Goats, um, Jim Jordan, uh, Lee Zeldin. You have rep – they're real Republicans for the first time. Trey Gowdy is controlled opposition. They're real Republicans really making real moves and I think this is going to – I thought – I predicted two months ago blue wave. I said the Democrat energy, I just – because I meditate a lot and I'm, I'm really plugged into things. And I said the energy I felt was so strong for the Democrats, I thought for sure they were going to take over the House in November. But their energy has been channeled in a negative way, in a very satanic um, negative way, and they're losing that energy. And now the patriots and the true Americans are – realizing that if they want more reports like this, if they want justice, they have to vote for Republican candidates in, in November. So again, this is very powerful stuff that we heard today. And it, it is empowering to the people, just like the WikiLeaks thing, right? Remember, when WikiLeaks came out, nobody went to jail over that. But everybody learned that the Democrat election was rigged. Everybody learned that the media is fake. Everybody learned that there's collusion between the media and the Clinton campaign. And because of that, evil was thwarted or at least, you know, uh, prevented a little bit. So we have to remember we are in a war. I've said this many times. We are in a war for good and evil. This is goodness versus the demonic, deg negative, dark, just satanic energy. And it will always it will always be a struggle, but today goodness prevailed. Well, I'd like to see some hedge roll. I think a lot of people would like to see hedge roll. Maybe this is a step towards that, but more than anything, I think you're right. This is a public awakening moment and a kind of curtain being removed, a veil being removed. And I do believe this though. I do believe this. The deep state is panicked. I think that the deep state goes into more panic every day Trump is not removed from office. I think every time the sun sets and rises and Trump is still president, the deep state gets more and more panicked. So what do you expect them to do next as they get more exposed? They're not going to give away the, king to the, the keys to the kingdom without a fight. Well, and that's again too why the report today was um, very powerful because – they now know that, they, you know, I always told Alex, I was always more afraid of Alex being assassinated than I was Trump just because the deep state has targeted him for operations and other things that, that are off the books. And we're, we're now, I mean, look at what's happening with all these, you know, frivolous things going on and everything like that. So, uh, again, we're, we're waking up the people, the collective – the collective consciousness has, has risen today. That's the way I look. I, I view things only in terms of the energy and which way the energy is going. And I'm also, also too, um, probably much more, I don't know, either cynical or jaded or whatever. But I mean, there's th these people, we live in the plutocracy. The, the, the real power people never get arrested. It's just not America. The, the Wall Street bailouts, the big banks got bailed out. None of the big people went to jail. But if you were a, a nobody, you lost your house, they would go after you. That's just the, the way of America as a plutocracy. And t today, plutocracy is just really another way of saying it's a deep state or an oligarchy. But today, you know, people are learning, okay, so really if you're just the little guy, the little gal, they're going to try to destroy you, destroy the family – and we can't we can't let that happen. We have to to fight harder. And because as Americans we become complacent. Remember, people like me, I'm not even a political guy. I don't you know I don't care about any of this stuff until Trump ran, because I knew it didn't matter before Trump ran. I told people if you care about politics, you're a loser. You know why would you care about John McCain or Obama or Mitt Romney or Obama? I mean, are you out of your mind? Oh, oh the big election, Mitt Romney versus Barack Obama. Holy cow, fired up, charged up, let's go, you know, go to the polls. Like, get out of here. What a joke. What a just a pathetic, you know, mind state to be in because it didn't matter. It was a plutocracy. Trump came in and I said, oh, man, this is probably the only time in my life. It was such a historical time. It was like Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, all the, you know, Abigail, all, all the great founding fathers and founding mothers. Now we have people like you, Alex. Candace Owens, you know, Charlie Kirk now, they're being attacked by the, the deep state, Young America Foundation's now attacking. So we're in 
a, a time that we haven't been in since the great beginning. So we, we are having a, an amazing enlightenment, amazing time. So for me, I'm, I'm very enthused because I don't expect closure. I just think it's the energy headed in the right direction. And today, the energy was going in the right direction. And let's be clear about something here. We're not Republican pitchmen. I'm not a registered Republican. I've never been a registered Republican. I don't identify as a Republican. So when we talk about the upcoming elections and we say, you know, vote Republican or people voting Republican, really, that's more a stance that you're taking against the Democrat Party platform that has gone so far left, has gone so far to being bigoted, racist, double standard, liars, represented by represented by people like uh, Waters and Pelosi and Schumer and Swalwell and Schiff. So so it's, it's really just more about avoiding having more people like that in the government as not as much us saying, oh, vote Republican, Republican's the way to go. It's just right now with this political wave and with this momentum, the vote for Republican is the vote for the wave to continue, a vote for the momentum to continue in the way of making America uh, first versus selling America down the drain for socialism, more welfare, more racism, more classism, more this, more that. And so you're saying, though, where you thought perhaps the blue wave was coming, you're now seeing it the other way. Yeah, the, the Democrats are losing momentum in a, in a big way. And part of that is because they're infighting. Part of that is because they fully now embraced anti-Semitism. They now want the complete destruction of, of Israel, which is bizarre. You know, it's kind of funny. There's all these videos now that Alex is a Zionist shill and I'm a Zionist shill. And I'm, I'm like, guys, Linda Sarsar and the very people who hate me hate Israel. You know, so why, you know, maybe, maybe you ought to think about that a little bit. So the Democrats, um, Keith Ellison, for example, his replacement had tweeted out that she actually sided with, oh, the protesters, right? Those poor people, um, even though we know they're Hamas and they're Hezbollah and terrorism and everything. So the Democrat is now the party of MS-13. They're the party of Hamas. And they are the party, they're not saying anything about the pedophilia stuff. The Department of Justice, 2,300 arrests. Not one mainstream media outlet like the New York Times, Washington Post, CNN. The Department of Justice said we got 2,300 pedos, multi-agency operation. They issued a press release. Nobody in the mainstream media is covering that. You know, I, so I find that quite interesting. But that's the Democrat Party now. MS-13, Hezbollah, Hamas, and, and pedophiles and pedophilia. So you, you can't win elections if that is what you're supporting. And let's do that press release do justice i know you covered it we covered it but operation broken heart three-month operation um multi-level operation arrested over 2300 pedos got a bunch of the child porn off of the, the web huge deal and just like you said no media coverage i mean total media blackout i mean that is shocking to me and i'm not sure if that's an angle of they don't want to touch it because they're not they're they're not supposed to touch it they're not allowed to touch it or if they don't want to touch it because just genuinely they feel like this is so disgusting this is so you know a punch to the gut that they just don't even want to cover it because they're afraid it might hurt their ratings no no i mean we we all know why they're not covering it i mean you know you don't have to be you know they keep bringing you know think about the way they lied and tried to say that we were claiming something that we weren't claiming, and they bring that up two years later. I'm like, no, 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 I never even said anything like that, right? I was always talking about the pedos and all this big kind of stuff going on, the international human trafficking ring. They ha so, you know, so they lied and pretended that we were talking about something we weren't talking about as a way to try to shut us down. And now when there is an actual real arrest, 2,300 pedos picked up, big, big press release and everything. The media's got nothing to say about that. So every time they bring my name up, they'll say Mike Cernovich, comma, who claimed blah, 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 basement, which I never said. That's a lie. And they don't bring up the real stuff. So think about that, right? We, we all know what's going on here. We're, we're intelligent people. We can figure it out. You know, they're, they're obviously protecting people that they have to, maybe they know or whatever, but that's their fault, man. Uh, the American people are watching and saying, why aren't you reporting on this, CNN? 
You know, why are you, why are you screaming at Corey Stewart because he used to be friends with a guy who ended up, you know, becoming a nutcase? Well, that's fine. You know, go after Corey Stewart. You know, do your journalistic job. But why aren't you going after Keith Ellison and Louis Farrakhan and Barack Obama and the, the congresswoman um, who's running? She's going to replace Keith Ellison and how she um, supports Hamas and Hezbollah. Why aren't you covering the 2300? You know, the media, they're saying, oh, you know, Jake Taper, or fake Jake, I call him, tweeted out, blessed be the children. He's quoting, you know, Psalms. Because all these people who said, if you believe in, in Jesus, you're a bitter clinger, as Barack Obama said, you're a bitter clinger and you're clinging to your Bible. Because that's what Christians are, bitter clingers. Now suddenly, Jim Acosta is at the White House. Oh, what about the Bible? The guy who works for Playboy, what, what about the Bible? Oh, don't we care about children? It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you care so much about children, why are you not talking about the 2,300 pedophiles who are arrested, right? You, you don't have to be a genius to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, Jake Tapeworm over there at CNN. And it's amazing where here in this country... You get a media blackout on Operation Broken Heart, but you look across the pond in Europe, not only do you get a media blackout, you're not even allowed to talk about it. You're not even allowed to tweet about it. And if you even think about doing that, we have you arrested and put in jail, and we're going to send you over to the prison camp where it's 70% Muslims that want to chop your genitals off and torture you. I mean, Cernovich, what is this is this is really an incredible feature that I think it's hard to really grasp. But again, you just have to think critically. Why would any government forget the Tommy Robinson case? Why would any government in any situation protect pedophiles and protect child sac child traffickers? I mean, it's a pretty simple answer. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do the math on that formula. Yeah, here's the way I presented it many times, which is because my belief on a lot of issues differs from maybe traditional conservatives. I, you know, I, I think that as a white man, you know, maybe I have a limited, you know, I don't want people screaming at me. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm willing to entertain the idea of privilege and I'm willing to have that conversation. But let's talk about childhood sex trafficking. Let's talk about the pedophiles in jail. Let's talk about protecting children, right? Everybody's like, oh, you know, check your privilege, check your this, male privilege, this, white privilege. It's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not against that conversation, but what do you, there's children being trafficked and you're saying that we can't talk about children being trafficked, but you're claiming to care about people and to claim about humanity, right? But it, then it's even worse. Then they, then they criticize you and attack you for reporting on it. They attack you. It's like, hey, I want to find out what the hell's going on with these child sex trafficking rings. And then they put that to your name like it's a black mark. Like, look at Mike Cernovich. He investigates child sex trafficking. What a loon. Well, yeah, yeah it's really, um, I don't want to give the devil any tips, you know, but Every time they put that in there, people are like, "Oh wow, this must be a good person." <laughs> you know, they're like, "Oh, they're like, oh wait, he, wow, he somebody yeah. exposes child sex trafficking. Wow, I've, nobody has ever done that before. Interesting." Yeah, I mean, I have a lawsuit against Jeffrey Epstein, and to get court records and everything. Which surprising credit where's do will give the devil a do. There, um, I have a big lawsuit against uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Fundedjustice dot com forward slash Epstein lawsuit, E-P-S-T-E-I-N-L-A-W-S-U-I-T. That's not a plug just so that your producers can, can pull up the documents, but to their credit, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press filed a brief supporting my lawsuit to get these records. So, you know, we got to, you know, because we're real journalists, unlike people in the fake news, we, you know, criticize them where we criticize them, but I filed a, an open records lawsuit against um, Jeffrey Epstein and all these other people to find out you know, about this human trafficking ring. And the Miami Herald joined it, and the uh, Reporters Committee for Freedom of Press joined it. So there are you know, five or ten real journalists in the country. There aren't many. None of them are in the White House press briefing room. Well, there's a couple in the press briefing room from the Daily Caller and OANN, but... There are, you know, there are a few journalists, maybe five or ten, who actually want to, you know, f figure out what's going on, and they actually want to protect the children and and find out who the predators are. So, all you know, credits where it's due. They d they did file that brief supporting me.
that you know it is sad that that you have to recognize the fact that you're like a voice in the wilderness if you want to be a real journalist when it comes to covering child sex trafficking it really does tell you the state of the media however i think that there's actually a positive aspect of this where you know you you might go into a situation feeling like you're alone and then you come to find out once you take action that you're not alone and there's others that are willing to back you but you only find that out when you actually take that action i mean you got to take the arrows right so for me, that's where, you know, my legal background and everything kind of, and plus I've been 40, I've been beat the hell up in life and everything like that. So, you know, they're always like these 25 year old kids are like, ew, he's a, I'm like, dude, you're some like 25 year old kid. You've never done anything in your life. You know, I get, I've been smashed by life. I'm in real litigation for real things. So they're little barbs don't bother me, but. Yeah, if you are on the front lines and you are taking the arrows, remember courage is contagious as is cowardice. And that's why, you know, we're on the front lines every day. That's why when they attack us, I even say, because people go, you haven't done a video in a week. I'm like, why? You know, because nobody's attacking me. You know, it's like when they attack me, that's when I really have to come out and, and show that moral leadership. And when they just kind of leave me alone and, and quit lying about me, I you know, go hang out and go to the gym and do mindset things and, you know, other stuff. I saw, I saw that tweet from you, and I'm just curious. I mean, are you planning on kind of taking, uh, you know, all of your media stuff? Are you trying to take that in a different direction right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm um, the, you know, with Kanye, I think that, you know, the, the, the universe was ripped open by Trump. Kanye did it. I feel like everything's in a right direction that culturally I've done what I needed to do. And... I'm, so that's why I haven't been doing a lot of the day-to-day -day journalism scoops kind of thing. I've been handing off all my stories and everything because I feel like what I needed to – what I did was – I mean look at someone like Candace Owens, for example. Even when she says something that maybe I don't even agree with, she just will not back down. That is the cultural imprint now in these young people is you don't back down, you always double down, you fight hard. When they call you names, you bring up things their buddy's done a hundred times. If they call you a, uh, a white supremacist, you ask them why they won't ask Barack Obama about his connections to Louis Farrakhan. Why won't, Keith, why won't they ask Keith Ellison about Louis Farrakhan? You don't ever deny anything. You don't ever defend yourself on anything. The minute they bring up something, you say, well, why don't you go ask Bill Clinton about his rapes? You know, oh, tough guy. Oh, you're real tough, you know, coming after me and everything. Well, why don't you go show me that clip of you confronting Bill Clinton, the rapist, right? So the mindset now has been changed amongst the populace, amongst the conservatives, where they're, they're now realizing, yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to play defense. I'm not going to let somebody like Chris Cuomo or fake Jake Taper or Brian Stelter or, you know, Chris Hayes or Matto. I'm not going to enjoy Reed. Time traveling Russian hackers made her make all those jokes, right? So if you're a Republican and they ask you about anything, and even if you said it, you don't even admit it now. You just say, well, I was hacked by Joy Reid's um, time traveling hackers. I don't even know what you're talking about. That was uh, planted there by her, her hackers. And if you don't have the courage and the fortitude to do that, then you just need to be out of this game. So that has been my imprint culturally. People now understand, okay, we're playing by the same rules that the left plays by. And because of that, I feel like my work is sort of done and, um, you know, going back to other things. But that doesn't mean I'm gone forever. It just means I'm, you know, going to go off, really go back deep. Like Miyamoto Musashi, before he wrote the Book of Five Rings, he had been in over 65 duels. And he, he got so good that he would not even fight with a real samurai sword. He had to use a wooden sword. He, he was that good. And then after he had all these great duels, he went into a cave and he wrote the Book of Five Rings. So for me, well, I've been on 60 Minutes. I've been in the White House. I asked him about Antifa. You know, I've, I've been in all my duels and my war. And now I have to go just meditate a little bit for a while. And then, then I'll come back with something else, you know, some kind of new message. But uh, I, I feel like we, we're, we're hitting a point. And of course, hoax, which Alex is in, that is going to... So right now in conservative media, populist media, right-wing media, it's still very cheesy. The aesthetic is cheap, not InfoWars, your production value here is great. We haven't had a film though that looks like a real blockbuster. Like, wow, this is an amazing thing. 
So hoax, which Alex is in, and you know, that is going to set a new standard for right wing or conservative. I consider myself a centrist, actually. If we if we would just close the borders and tell people, all right, until you can all get along, nobody's coming in because you're all fighting with each other. I'm actually uh, quite moderate. Uh, calling me right wing doesn't even make any sense. So what you know, we're going to really show people this is what beautiful filmmaking looks like. And then once that is done, I feel like, okay, we, we've, we've set the standard and now all these other young up and coming people are really just going to make it happen. So it's kind of like Michael Jordan stepping away from the basketball court to go play baseball for a little bit. And then he comes back to dominate again. Yeah. I mean, you always, the reason I was so effective was because I didn't know anything. I mean, that was the whole point. Like for me, when I went on 60 Minutes, people are like, are you nervous? And I'm just like, well, why would I be nervous? Because to me, the social constructs never really meant anything to me, right? So I didn't feel that prestige, that status, like, oh my God, I'm, I'm really, right? So on an emotional level. And also, and also at the same level, at the same time, you don't buy into it on the other side. So you're not sitting there like, oh my gosh, I'm on 60 Minutes. Oh, I'm all nervous. Like, right. oh, this person sitting across from me is so prestigious. Yeah, exactly. I, I never wanted to be on Fox News. I never was like growing up. I want to be an anchor and I can't wait. So for me, I was just some guy like, man, I, you know, I don't even know who these people are. I don't know any of this stuff. I can just come in and take my hammer out and start swinging it around and smash things and, and show people this is how it's done and none of these people mean anything to me, right? That's the whole point. There's no prestige either way. Like, ooh, like Fox News. I, I don't I want like I've never tried to be on Fox News, right? I've never tried to to do any of that stuff. So for me, just on an emotional cognitive level, um, I like H. R. McMaster. I didn't know who he was. You know, suddenly I'm picking a fight with you know the National Security Advisor and Chuck Taz asking him about him, and I don't know. I don't even know any of this stuff. You know, so for me, that was why I was effective. Uh, as a as a full outsider, we got to go to a break here, Mike. I want to keep you um, on the other side at least for a couple minutes if you're available. And you know, it's funny that you talk about that. You know, because I cut my teeth in sports media. If you would have if you would have looked at me uh, eight years ago and told me that I was going to end up in political media, I would have laughed so hard I probably would have needed air. Uh, but but I, it's like the same thing with Mike. It's like. I don't classify myself as a conservative. I don't classify. I don't. I don't classify myself as anything. Honestly, I don't like any of these titles. I just consider myself a realist, and I just reach conclusions based on logic and evidence and experience. And that's what most humans are like. Quite honestly, we'll be right back. Hey, Mike, are you able to stay with us a little longer? Yeah, I can do another segment. Okay, cool. Um, so when, when do you need to go by? Because we, we're only taking the breaks at the top and about on the hour. Okay, what do you mean uh, go by? Well, I mean, do, can you... Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm fine. Yeah, 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 I'm fine. Okay, cool. Thank you. Speak up America, Patriot Blend Coffee. Ancient Mayan knowledge is paired with the natural fertility of the land. Hey, Periscope. I'm... Um, InfoWars are having like a 36-hour sort of marathon thing. Pardon me. They're having like a 36-hour marathon thing. So I'm just going live on that, uh, doing that. And, yeah, it was a great guy. You know, he's really, you know, really pr improved, you know, all the time. Young guy, you know. That's the thing. The, you know, the, they're, they're definitely, um, you know, they're definitely, um, definitely getting better. I mean, he was always good, but you know, everybody's everybody is uh, going better. Yeah, I got my hair cut today. There, um, yes, yeah, so I got my hair cut. You know, looking, looking sharp. Yeah, and I, yeah, I don't know how people. You know, Alex Jones doesn't hate on people. Once, the, what's the premise of hoaxed? Go to hoaxedmovie.com. H O A X E D hoaxed. M O V I E dot com, hoaxmovie dot com, and you can find the the premise, the premise of hoax. It, it is um, it's a take on fake news. It's a take on um, me. Alex is in it. You know, we ask Alex if he's fake news. So it's gonna be it's gonna surprise a lot of people. Um, you know, 
it really, it really is going to surprise a lot of people because a lot of people think they'll know what it is. What it is. It's, not like a, it's not a hatchet job on the MSM. We're critical of them, but it, it, it's, a, it's a look at how profound truth is. Profound you know, truth. Yeah, I got my hair cut. You know, the thing is, like, that's the thing. I was loving people like, oh, you're so full of yourself. You're so this. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really not. I probably should be, you know. I used to be at one time. I used to be, you know, just a total douchebag. But they're, um, so when I really want to, like, dress up, people are like, wow, you know, you look great. I'm like, I know, man. I know, dude. I know. Do I think uh, Acosta want, of course he wanted to sabotage the summit. Jim Acosta, or Jim Acosta definitely wanted to sabotage the summit. You think, I mean, peace is anathema to the mission of CNN. These people don't want peace. They don't want, you know, goodness in the world. They, they want death and destruction. That's how they make their money. They don't make any money if people are getting along well. Right. Yeah, they, um, yeah, trigger, trigger the cost. So by the way, if any of you tried the Gorilla Mind line of products, while you're here, my own plug. Has anyone here gone to Gorilla Mind, G-O-R-I-L-L-A-M-I-N-D.com? If you've gone to GorillaMind.com and tried things, let me know what you've tried. And what do you think? What have you tried and what is your, uh, what is your opinion about, about it? You just wash your face upon the use serum. Excellent. Yeah, the use serum is, is quite effective. Quite effective. Yeah, you gotta go to, you gotta go to Gorilla Mind, G-O-R-I-L-L-A, M-N-D.com. Yeah, Gorilla Mind Rush is a little, little intense. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Cernovich is with me here, and I will be here till midnight central. And I've got a couple topics I want to talk about with Mike Cernovich. But first, I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention this. This is from Zero Hedge today. <clears throat> Russia warns credible information of impending staged chemical attack in Syria. You also had the White House clear $6.6 .6 million to the White Helmets in Syria. So, ladies and gentlemen, that equals false flag in Syria approaching. Oxford child sex gang jailed for more than 75 years. South Africa has a new climate change bill. And I'm going to get to the details of those tomorrow in the war room. But this is a topic I want to discuss with Cernovich here tonight. Iraqi beauty queen draws criticism for Israel visit. So... You've got this Iraq model beauty queen, friends with the Israeli model beauty queen. They're hanging out in Israel, and there's a total panic. How dare this Iraq woman be hanging out with the Israeli beauty queen? And I look at this and I say, <clears throat> what happened to the left that used to cheer coexisting? I mean, they all drive around with the bumper sticker coexist. Now, here there's a movement in America behind Trump that's actually people of all different cultures and backgrounds and everything coexisting for one common good. You have this example with the Iraqi beauty queen and the Israeli beauty queen getting along, being friends, bringing people together, coexisting. What happened to the tolerant left all about diversity? It's like they only like it when they control it, Mike. Well, they, um, they don't support. I mean, we all know they don't really support diversity. Um, they support, um, you know, cause if you support diversity, here's what you would say, uh, welcome to America. It's a great country. They've welcomed you and Americans are nice people and they love you. Instead, what we hear from the left is welcome to America. Oh, by the way, uh, everybody hates you and we need to create strife and everything like that. So no, 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 they, they, they lie about, uh, supporting diversity. They just want to, um, create strife by lying to people about the great generosity of Americans and claiming Americans are not generous. And the, so you see it happening here too. I mean, I mean, the media will even say, oh, right. I mean, here's a good way to fact check the fake news media. Oh, the Israelis, they attacked 
poor, helpless Palestinians, aren't the Israelis just evil? But then you realize, well, wait a minute. When Miss Israel and Miss Iraq were in a picture together, the Israelis didn't threaten Miss Israel, but the Arabs sure did threaten Miss Iraq, didn't they? That's awfully interesting. You won't see that report in the media, though. So they'll say, oh, you know, oh, the Isra you know, Israel's the bad guys. Like, well, no, no, no. Miss Iraq, because when they first took that, remember they, the, they met, but they took that selfie. It was like a few months ago, I think. Uh, and then she had to flee, Miss Iraq did, because she was getting death threats from Arabs. But the media, you know, they don't report that. They don't report that if you're an Arab and you are cool with Israelis, then you're going to get you're death American. threats. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, and it, it, it's sad, though. It's, it, it's a blockade, really, in truly coming together, in truly co coexisting. And, and I just feel like it, 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 all, it, it has to be about their terms. They have to dictate who is the racist, who's not the racist, and then how to form groups based on that. And, and if it's like genuine, organic coming together and coexisting, it's like they rebuke that, they reject that because they don't control it, and that scares them. All right, one more topic I want to get to, and then if you can stick around and take some calls, we'd appreciate it. If you have to jump off, I understand. Um, but but with, your, with your background, with your legal background, how do you analyze Robert Mueller? Okay, so he's behind the Russian probe. He indicts uh, the Russians, the Russian entities, 15 total. Nobody expects the Russians to show up. Nobody expects Russia to extradite the Russians. We think that this story dies here. Whoa, the Russians outsmarted us again. They show up in court. They demand discovery. Now Robert Mueller's back is against the ropes. He doesn't know what to do. He avoids court, tries to put it off. The judge says no. Then Mueller denies them discovery and says, I can't give them discovery. I'm still obtaining evidence. But wait a second. What prosecutor in their right mind or lawyer or attorney or anybody in their right mind would indict somebody before they've collected all the evidence. There isn't one. So what's Mueller's excuse? Yeah, so, I mean, this is a great topic, a very rich, rich topic for conversation, uh, very important. So um, fundamentally, if you're ever charged with a crime, you know what you want to do is you actually want to delay it because delays always inure to the benefit of the defense. This is like criminal law 101. You know, witnesses have bad memories, you know, maybe somebody forgets it, they back out or whatever. So if you're charged with a crime, you want it to like drag on for years, okay? If you're the prosecutor, you have your case locked and loaded. Headshot, boom, you wake the guy up, you get the perp walk, you know everything, he knows nothing, let's take it to trial. So Mueller, they indicted this Russian company and as a PR stunt. They didn't think that the Russian company was going to show up in court because he, you know, so they indicted a bunch of Russian nationals and a couple Russian companies thinking, well, I mean, nobody's going to actually show up in court. I got a big, he, remember he did that big press release with um, Rosenstein and they oh, yeah, indicted. That was the big story. That yeah. was their Russian collusion closure, not. And did you notice the numerology in the indictment? 13. Go back to the original indictment and the original press release with Rosenstein. Rosenstein, and, and, and you'll actually see the numerology. That's like their occult stuff that they do. They're, they're all occultists. They all believe in this stuff. And so go look at the actual numerology of, of the number of defendants. And it's not like, it, it isn't like 18 or something. It's a very specific number that's consistent with their occult practices and religions. So th they followed this stuff thinking we got a big press release. We have, even though it wasn't collusion, we have some Russians indicted. Well, if you indict a person, that person can go to prison. If you indict a company, the worst thing that happens is a company goes out of business. So the company said, well, I mean, okay, whatever. We don't care. What are you going to do? We'll fight it. So they show up in court. Mueller's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, like I was just, this was a PR stunt. This wasn't a real case that I ever intended to fight in court. So then he goes, well, this was the most beautiful part of the hearing. He said that we aren't prepared to take the case to trial because we haven't translated the documents from Russian. It's like, well, wait a minute, bro. So what, how do you know what happened? Yeah. How do you know what's in the documents? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Mueller, he's like, well, I mean, we, we haven't translated. Well, wait a minute. You, you haven't translated your evidence? 
then how do you know that that's evidence? That I mean, so it really is a true farce. And, it, and I think the whole thing, it, it's like this, this incident to me personifies the entire investigation. It's a PR stunt, period. It's an agenda-driven PR stunt. The fact that it gets exposed by the indictments of the Russians is like so perfect I, I, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet of irony. And again, though, this is like, th to me, this blows the entire Russian collusion narrative, the entire Mueller investigation through the roof. This shows how fake it is. This should be everywhere. This should be all any lawyer is talking about. I mean, this is like the perfect example of how fake the whole thing is. Anybody worth their salt that's passed the bar will see right through this. Yeah, every um, every case that they brought is actually a process crime. If George Papadopoulos had never talked to Mueller, never would have been charged. He uh, he got him on obstruction for some BS. Um, Alex Vander something. He was a um, a Dutch guy, lawyer at Skadden Arps. He got hit with obstruction of justice. General Flynn framed for obstruction of justice, even though. At the time he gave the interview, Mueller wasn't involved. So everybody, Manafort is just not a good person. I mean, you know, if you dig into Paul Manafort, you know, it's like Tony Podesta. If they went after Tony Podesta the way they went after Paul Manafort, they would find a ton of stuff too. But that's also the media keeps forgetting Tony Podesta had a $20 million a year lobbying shop and they closed it up like that, right? That kind of went away. People can Google that. $20 million a year lobbying shop. Closed up. Why? Because he's laying low. Because if Mueller looks into Tony Podesta like he would do Manafort, they're all shady people. That's the whole thing. You've never heard me defend Manafort. I'm, I'm not throwing him out of the bus. He's just a shady guy, and you know he's he lived that lavish, opulent lifestyle, and you know didn't live uh, a frugal life, and whatever got caught up. But the point is, not one indictment has involved collusion. Even the Russian troll farm thing doesn't involve collusion. That involves identity theft. Their well, collusion isn't even a prosecutable offense. Well, but 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 yeah, not only is collusion not a prosecutable uh, offense, but their their case against the so-called Russian trolls involves Russian trolls you know, allegedly stealing an ID to buy ads. Okay, well, fine, whatever. You know, maybe they're not allowed to do that or whatever. The implications of that could be um, interesting, but there's there's no that's it. Like it's identity theft. So there's it's been a year and a half, and there's nothing on. Collusion between, and that's because, as you know, as Alex knows, as I know, the campaign couldn't even collude with itself, right? The campaign, the campaign couldn't even get a decent hashtag. That was why people like me and Alex and you and others filled the void. The campaign was not effective, and uh, you know, it goes to show the power of Trump. They still want it to their credit, so they couldn't even collude with each other. So the idea that they were, you know, having these secret meetings and you know, colluding with Russia is again counterfactual. And it's just hilarious. They've got three spies in the campaign. They collude with Russia to get the fake dossier. But 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 ultimately, ultimately, Mike, I think the truth lies in this. And it and it keeps coming true. Everything that they accuse Trump of, they're guilty of. Every time. Take a look at the most recent example. They say the new York Attorney General Underwood replaces Schneiderman. Look at all the puzzle pieces that fell into place after Schneiderman getting released, but that's a different story. They say, we're going to sue the Trump Foundation. We're going to try to shut the Trump Foundation's doors. <clears throat> well, okay, you do a little bit of research into the Trump Foundation. You find out that um, basically it's like no, there's no salaries, there's no staff, there's a board – they don't take salaries, and m almost half or more of the money coming in is directly from Donald J. Trump's pockets. So even if they were <laughs> laundering money, it, what would be the point? They're taking their own money. But that's not even going on. That's not even going on, and that's not what they're claiming. They're claiming that the Trumps were using these funds from the Trump Foundation for the campaign, which they have no proof of. But then you step back and you apply the same logic. Anything they accuse Trump of, they're guilty of. Look at the Clinton Foundation, a 90% expense ratio. That means if you donate a dollar to the Clinton Foundation, one dime from that dollar is actually going to go towards a charitable cause, if you even believe that. 
Then you've got the G5 private jets that the Clinton Foundation owes that they fly around on during the campaigns, that they fly around their cronies on. So it's like the same thing. Here they are pointing the finger at the Trump Foundation for X, Y, and Z, while the Hillary and Bill Clinton Foundation is stacked upon stacks of X, Y, and Zs. Yeah, uh, and Schneiderman, of course, the former attorney general, referred to his Sri Lankan girlfriend as his brown slave. I mean, wh how did that story just go away, right? They dig up stuff from us, jokes, you know, they, they'll, you, you know, satire, things completely taken out of context, edited, spliced together. I mean, you name it, they're like, oh, 10 years ago, you said this thing that we're going to edit out of context and bring up. Well, okay, whatever, cool, bro, you know, go do your thing. The Attorney General of New York referred to his Sri Lankan girlfriend, his, his brown slave, and he made her wear a slave collar. So in, in one picture you can find of her, she's actually wearing a slave collar, and he used, you know, why are we talking about, you know, old tweets or old this or old that or, you know, Donald Trump this or Donald Trump that? Because ultimately everything is a distraction, and the new Attorney General wants to distract from Eric Schneiderman, but the issue is that Trump is not a traditional... Mitt Romney style Republican. What we need to get Trump to tweet about, you know, Allison Mack and say, did Eric Schneiderman cover up for Nexium? You know, th there's a well, lot of know, things. It's pretty obvious Schneiderman was covering up for Weinstein. As soon as Schneiderman goes down, Weinstein falls. I mean, that's about as obvious as it gets. But think about it too. I mean, you know how this stuff works. Mack reaches a plea deal, which they weren't going to give her. I mean, sh they were not going to give her that plea deal. She had to agree to cooperate in some way, shape, or form to get that plea bargain. So we're kind of waiting to see what happens with that. But it's just amazing. It's like what you were saying, though. But here's where the tech left and the tech giants come into play. So then you go onto Google and you search Eric Schneiderman, which, by the way, I thought Brian Stelter looked like Pennywise. I think Eric Schneiderman's taking the cake for that now. But if you go in and you plug into Google Eric Schneiderman, you're not going to see the brown sl sex slave comments. You're not going to see any of that. Nope. But if you go and plug in Mike Cernovich, oh, it's going to be the first radical leftist lie about you. Yep. If you go plug in Owen Schroyer, it's going to be Owen Schroyer gets owned by a young girl. It's like a black eye on me when some young girl comes up to me and flicks me off. Like that's a negative story on me. And that's what you find, though. That's how they rig even the search engines. Well, I mean, the whole, there's a whole, yeah, a lot going on there. But uh, again, people are just waking up and realizing, you know, the, the light is our control, right? That's the whole thing. Like, so for me, they still call me an alt-right social media personality. It's like, oh my God. But Eric Schneiderman, you know, calls, Eric Schneiderman is more alt-right than, you know, I ever could call be alt-right. You know, he refers to his girlfriend as a brown slave. Well, that sounds like an alt-right you know, kind of thing to do. So where are the media articles asking if, you know, Eric Schneiderman is um, alt-right? Where are the media articles asking him, if he, is he a rape apologist? Sounds like it. He hit a girl, one of these women, because you know me, I believe in due process and everything. So when I was reading that New Yorker article about him, one of the claims was that he hit one of the women so hard that her ears rang. So me being a lawyer, I went to lawyer mode, I go, well, uh, you know, I wonder if there's medical records, you know, anybody can make stuff up nowadays. You know, I wonder. And then the next paragraph. Oh, and the woman went to see a doctor because she was having um, ambrosio uh, balance issues because of the inner ear damage. Oh, and we saw the medical records. And I was like, whoa. I mean, so, so this he, is. He hit a girl so hard she has vertigo. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so when I was reading that New Yorker article, I was like, well, you know, so if you look into the article, the original New Yorker article that broke it, they actually um, proved the medical records that she went to the doctors. So they, they found doctor records, um, doctor's records. So, you know, even me being, you know, a lawyer and believing in due process, like, man, I mean, he did it, you know, there's, there's no, it's like, wait a minute, uh, this is not like a he said, she said kind of thing. Maybe, you know, Maybe he, you know, he read Fifty Shades and, you know, took a little too far, or didn't really know what he was doing or whatever. It's like, no, no, no. This is like he hit her so hard that her ear, ear was ringing. She had to go to, you know, an inner ear doctor. So why is that not all over the place, right? Why do people want to pretend like that never happened? Well, the same reason Bill Clinton bit Juanita Broderick's lip. And then, you know, Hillary Clinton said, you better put some ice on that. You know, they still, CNN still hasn't asked Bill Clinton about... That, but they'll ask you about a tweet. Go make a joke on Twitter. Oh, yeah, they'll bring that up. Big story, though. Don't forget, though, Stormy Daniels. Right. You know, the woman that is a porn star that has, you know, sex for a living. 
you know, she's the big story, though. She's the victim of Trump, even though she never even claimed to be a victim of Trump. And this is how the media works. To her credit. Oh, Mike, uh, I actually give her credit, too. She outsmarts the media. She gets millions and millions of dollars of free marketing, and she got rich. And she really never even came out as anti-Trump, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, you can't really find records of her saying anything that's necessarily anti-Trump. And that's where Michael Cohen made a big legal error. And I said this early on. I was one of the first people to say it. Stormy Daniels, she told her story. Her story was... We had consensual sex. And then, of course, Anderson Cooper asked if he wore a condom because that's journalism, you know. And that was the story. Anderson Cooper is a condom. Excuse me. Go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, that, you know, Anderson Cooper, the teabagging comment. You know, he's, he said a lot of things. He gets a passport, too, <laughs> that, you know, we would never get a passport. And I, I found it fascinating that they're, they're dragging that on and then they move on. But... I want to hear them. Stormy Daniels is in a Me Too. Stormy Daniels, again, to her credit, said, I'm not Me Tooing Donald Trump. Nothing untoward happening to gentlemen and everything. Okay, great. So why don't they ask Bill Clinton about Juanita Broderick? Who will be the first mainstream CNN journalist to actually ask that question? I eagerly await it, and I think the answer is none of them ever will because Bill Clinton is their buddy, and they'll protect him at all costs, just like they'll, connect, or they'll protect Schneiderman. All right, all right, final thing I want to talk to Mike about here before we take this, this last break, before we hit midnight here, Central. Uh, you're seeing the narrative now. Michael Cohen to flip on Trump. Michael Cohen, lawyers leave him. He's to flip on Trump. Uh, again, another false narrative that they can only pull over the people because they don't understand basic legal activity. Michael Cohen is actively seeking legal counsel. If he was going to flip, he wouldn't be seeking legal counsel. Uh, Mike, your comments. I mean, not only that, but he can't flip. The attorney-client privilege protect is, belongs to the client. So your lawyer, like, so if you go to a lawyer's office and you say, hey, lawyer, you know, and you confess to the crime, the lawyer can't re report on you. The privilege belongs to you. This is a legal concept. Who holds the privilege? Trump holds the privilege, the attorney-client privilege. Now, a lot of people say, well, the crime fraud exception might apply. There is, no, there is no crime fraud exception. That's all fake, like the Stormy Daniels thing is fake, like the Russiagate thing is fake. So even if Michael Cohen wanted to quote-unquote flip, he can't because you cannot break privilege as a lawyer. That the privilege belongs to Trump. So the, even if he tried to flip and there's nothing to flip over, he wouldn't be able to give his testimony. Trump could actually block that. So it's all, again, more fakeness. It's really just incredible that all of this goes on. Yeah. Now, we've got three minutes left before I have to hit a break. I want to apologize to, to Andy and Uncle Sam. I wanted to talk to you, Michael. Thank you for sending me that video. Gabriel, my friend down, I believe, uh, Texas State, doing a lot of political activism down there. I salute you, Gabriel. But I've only got three minutes left, so I'm just not going to go to the phone lines. I'm just going to get a final comment uh, from Mike Cernovich on uh, all the events today, everything we talked about. And um, we'll, we'll let him go. So, Mike, uh, just, just close it out here and uh, say goodbye to the audience. Yeah, hey everybody, thanks for listening in. Good day. You know, there's no magic bullet. There's no silver bullet. There's no report that is going to come out and change everything. But you now are armed with information. And if people call you conspiracy theorists, you go, hmm, you mean the conspiracy theory that the FBI said that if you support Trump, you're the R word and that you're white trash and you're a POS and you're garbage and you're, you're an idiot loser? Hmm, you mean yeah, they actually said this? That came out of the YouTube undercover video. Yeah, exactly. So it's all, it's all there. So everybody thinks to watch. You can always find more. Uh, C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H dot com. Cernovich dot com. Check me out there. Hang out. Talk. Do the thing. All right, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, good luck on your next life's journey. Always a I pleasure. I know it's like to uh, have to step away and recharge the batteries, only to come back more powerful. Exactly. There goes Mike Cernovich. Now, I just want to say to the callers on hold here, um, your calls will still be taken. I, I do believe that Joel Gilbert, who's coming up next. All right, my friends. Thank you. I think that was an enjoyable, enjoyable conversation. Yeah, I haven't been on haven't been on the IW, haven't been on the IW in a long time. And then whenever I'm not on the IW, people are like, oh, are you, you know, you and Alex? I was like, no, there's, there's just, there is no conspiracy theory, <laughs> right? I just, I haven't been on for a while. And then, then people ask me, you haven't been on in a while. It's like, dude, I was just on, uh, you know, now. So yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a good conversation, you know, good talk, the whole, 
you know, the whole, the whole thing is, uh, whole thing is good. People go, why not? Because if you're on InfoWars regularly, you become, like, famous. They're, like, it's hard to explain how famous you become if you're on InfoWars. Like, the, the amount of people he reaches is, like, millions a day. And if you're on InfoWars regularly, like, anytime you're out in public, you're like, everybody, you know, everybody knows, everybody sees you. And I only like to be, like, a little bit famous. Like, tiny, you know, tiny, tiny fame. So with the InfoWars, I was becoming way too famous. And I wanted to be, um, you know, I just wanted to dial it down a little bit. Balance is important. Focus on the film. Focus on the books. Focus on, you know, the next projects. And then I'm going to go away for a little bit. Probably in October. And if, you know, I'll go away. I'm going to leave probably in September, October. I'll be gone. And then, you know, maybe I'll come back. You know, maybe, uh, maybe I will, you know. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But I'll, I'll be back for the GOP primaries. I'll definitely, but you know, we got a film coming out. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, we still have a film coming out. You know, hoaxedmovie.com, H-O-A-X-E-D-M-O-V-I-E.com. Go to hoaxedmovie.com, H-O-A-X-E-D-M-O-V-I-E.com. Go to hoaxedmovie.com, find out. We still have big projects coming out. Thanks for watching. Mike Cernovich, C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H.com.